Hi folks and welcome to the Salty Seaman coming back at you one more time with another Tales from the Fleet. Uh, I think I'm going to finish up boot camp this time before I drag this out too longer. Uh, however long this is going to take me. It's a service week up through graduation. So uh, let's hope it isn't too damn long. Uh, some of you seem to really enjoy it no matter the length, so that's cool. A uh, little admin note before we get started. I know I've been promising G.I. Jane military movie bullshit forever. And uh, I was even supposed to do it tonight, but in a live stream, I'm just, I'm just not in the mood. I've been trying to get in the mood for this movie, and I just can't. Uh, and I don't want to force it, because I think it'll just be shitty entertainment quality. I even tried to do a standard watch it and make comments, and started realizing about 20 minutes in the movie, I was a little too tired, and a little too drunk, and I was slurring. So I uh, scrapped that. Oh, some of you might have liked to hear that. Probably be interesting, but... uh. I wasn't, and uh, yeah, I'm not doing the live stream tonight just for that reason. You know, when I'm, I'm in the mood to do it, I'll do it one way or the other and make a good product, so that's the key here, be entertaining and put out something decent. So with that said, for those of you who enjoy my fleet stories, let's finish up boot camp. Now, this, as I left off, we were getting into service week. If you are a newer join, you probably don't know what that is for the Navy, I don't think the other services do anything similar, actually. But I think KP duty or mess cranking, food service attendant in the fleet, that's basically what it is. You work with the cooks for about a week. Uh, this is a break from basically your RDCs. You don't see them almost ever the entire time you're there. Uh, food everywhere. And you're kind of left on your own for the first time in a month. But the hours are fucking brutal. It's, you get, it's, t it's two, a it's, 2 a.m. to 10 p.m. every day for seven days. Uh, so about four hours of sleep. So you're just, you're so exhausted by the end of it. You know, it's no way to live. I know I bitch about sleep a lot on here, but that's one of the things I really remember about boot camp is just being tired all the fucking time. You know, dreaming of just like graduation weekend, not even hanging out with my parents or anything, just sitting in a hotel room and taking a fucking nap. That's all I wanted to do. Didn't care about sex, booze seeing anybody I just wanted to get a nice bed and fucking sleep oh my god uh if anyone knows me probably you know knows i know i do love my naps and sleep which might surprise some other people who know i'm a night owl you know that's when i post a lot of these i'm usually up and that is my natural instinct you know stay up late at night and uh, sleep till late morning uh real life doesn't let really you do that and i did 20 years in the navy having to fight that natural feeling but now I'm a semi-retired freelancing college student, and I have plenty of time for naps, which is great. Now, not everyone goes to the galleys on service weeks. Some, uh, mostly the, uh, you know, the group art. A bunch stay in the uh, compartment and do deep cleaning. And there's people who the artists that work on the uh, company flag. And a bunch go work at the drill hall. These are usually the uh, people in leadership roles, so they kind of you know, get out of that, uh, you know, hellish existence of getting four hours a night. But I mean, so other than the sleep, you know, it was, you know, I mean, I got lucky. Uh, I didn't work the serving line. I didn't work deep sink. I didn't work the scullery. I worked supply office, just me and this one other guy, you know, it wasn't a, f we never really got along. Like we just, we just were two different people. Like we weren't friends before that or really after but yeah, we just kind of uh, sat in there and handed out s supplies to all the people working. And uh, we ran out. We went down to a uh, little lock space by the uh, loading dock and got more. And that's kind of all we did all day. You know, you eat and try to stay awake. There's no door on the office, the supply office. So what you end up with is, you know, ample time to fall asleep. And of course, they catch you, you know, you get yelled at, wake up. You know, we try to take turns grabbing little cat naps here and there you know one of us one would watch for anyone coming and one would be back kind of away from the open door and just lay on a pile or whatever he didn't care at that point but you know we got you know everyone it was but it was pretty chill like i said there was no one you know the cooks there aren't already sees they don't yell at you you know some are civilians some are or ms's at the time and uh you know we it was it was that part was all right but just the, uh, my God, so it's like just when you were recovering from sleep, it was recovering your sleep, you were right back to a deficit. So, 
And then once that week was over, they, uh, you know, you're officially on to the second half of boot camp and you get the, uh, the white belt instead of the green booger belt, which kind of shows your progress. And that's something we've been looking forward to. They also used to switch from the Navy ball cap to the white hats at that point, And we were the first week I think ever that didn't get the white hat after service week. They told us they don't do that anymore. They're phasing out the Dixie cup with the uh, dungarees. So we're just going to keep the Navy ball cap on. So two different things, definitely different from boot camp now, as opposed to how they used to, you know, have, you, you know, you now get a recruit ball cap. And the big thing is when you get to get put on your Navy ball cap as a sign, you, you finished boot camp. And then we had the similar in the middle with the white hats and that went away and service week, which I don't, I'm, which they don't do anymore. I think that was a few years ago. I think when they switched to the internal, uh, chow halls that kind of that kind of went away it's all civilians now I, I believe regardless so, so we continued on to boot camp we did you know others you know like so it, the beatings are you know they still come but they're not you know you're just so used to them by that point you know you can just take it you know you worry about you know at this point we're really worried focusing on getting the cno the top honor grad that means keeping everything completely squared away because anything can lose your points and uh, we didn't quite get it. You know, that one of the things that dropped us, you know, they always pointed out was, you know, we had an iron PO as a guy in charge of handing out irons for people to iron their uniforms for inspections. And they had to be uh, put away in this cord stowed ever so properly. And uh, some other, some inspector came through while we were at, I think, breakfast. And they left a note they'd hit us on uh on the, the iron being then stowed in properly, like those points was enough to just leave us from hitting uh, <laughs> from hitting CNO from what we were told by our RDCs. Uh, I guess I could talk a little bit about them. I talked about Cade being a uh, you know funny guy, uh, just hilarious. Now he does inspections. Uh, I didn't talk a lot about Bordley. She was kind of kind of a bitch, and uh, I believe she was going through a divorce, like a lot of. Uh, boot camp trainers end up losing their marriage not an uncommon thing you spend it's shore duty but you spend so much time away so she was going through that and I, I just think she was kind of a bitchy person in general uh you know one time she was the c the cdo command duty officer for our our uh, ship and just to fuck with us she was she had everyone doing push-ups for something and she told the watch to grab two people who aren't doing them properly and she's going to take them around on her rounds and we're just going to PT us the entire time. And if lucky me, I get picked by the watch for supposedly not doing my push-ups correct. You know, he just grabbed two random guys at, at random. Uh, me and a guy, a guy I remember, Andahar. He got asmode into our group. Uh, yeah, not a lot to say about him. He was kind of a piece of shit. But, you know, we got taken around and everyone said, like, you know, I think that was the time you you lost your your, your belly there, Owens. Was the uh, and I came back from that beating session of God knows how long it was. I was completely soaked anyway. You know, around the last week, uh, it started to snow, so, or you know, early November, which is when it starts snowing in Chicago. You know, who the fuck knew that? Not this southern boy, but uh, yeah, it was the coldest I've ever been in my life to this day. A part of that was just we're not brushed properly, and we still had to march everywhere. We weren't quite to the season of needing the the winter issue gear. So we just had the uh, raincoat, you know, the big Johnny Cash duster looking thing with a liner in it and uh, the watch cap and gloves. Yeah, we had gloves. And the watch cap couldn't be pulled over your ears. It was just, man, that sucked. I mean, it was really cold. We had shovel details, the whole deal. If you've ever been, if you went to Great Lakes and, uh, the winter, you definitely know about shoveling snow. Uh, looks like I never got it on a snow detail. It was only like the last week or so. So yeah, we didn't we didn't get CNO. We got Battle E. Uh, we're just moving along. Uh, I had a weird problem with my abdomen. Uh, turned out it was stress related, but I, was, I couldn't pass my sit ups. And like I've been working out, you know, I could do push ups all day long. I could run. By this point. But, uh, yeah, I just couldn't uh, get the ad. Like, I just freeze up at 40, like around 40, 45. I couldn't figure out why. And then I took the PRT test after I left boot camp and <laughs> cranked out 60 without a problem. 
Uh, it turns out, yeah, it carries stress in my abdomen, and it was cramping me up. So I ended up having to retake the final PT test, and, you know, somebody Ricky counted for me on my setups. But then it was never a problem again. A funny story with the uh, the run. You know, I was dropping out of the early run, early on runs because I was out of shape. But uh, you know, one day we ran with the, div- the division officer, you know, our RDC's boss. And he just kind of gave us a look. This wasn't a RDC bullshit look. This was a I'm going to fucking kill you look. I just said, and he just said, no one will fall out of this run. Calm, dead, stay in the facts. And no one did. People fell out of runs after that. I never did again. You know, that pushed me past wherever I needed to go. And I was like, okay, I can do this. So. But, uh, yeah, the, that was the, my main worry. The last thing is, like, I was going to get as mode because I couldn't pass the PT test. Luckily, I got through it. I got my first hazing somewhere in there. I think it was after first service week. I had I decided to, a lot of times they're trying to run the, through the line fast. I tell you not to pick and choose uh, your, your cereals. Like, you're holding up time. And it was just some dumb person still on uh, service week. So I'm, I'm, you know, I'm like week seven or whatever. Like, fuck this bitch. So I was ignoring her. And I was looking for the Captain Crunch because I knew I'd seen it. But now I couldn't find it again. So it took me like an extra five seconds to find the fucking Captain Crunch. Well, she, of course, went to the line. Petty officer who fucking reported us. And then we all got yelled at. So that night for every 15 minutes, I had to get up and go flush a piece of toilet paper. That was my... Uh, my hazing for uh, getting the division yelled at or whatever. But, uh, you know, you suck it up. No big deal. There's plenty of other people who got, got theirs in various different ways. <laughs> Apparently mine was comical, and they actually stopped doing it to me about 3 a.m. because I was just, I wasn't even, like, fully awake. I was just kind of zombified. But it was entertaining to watch, I guess. So that was, I guess at least they accomplished something. Uh, you know, we had, you know, various people got rolled out. Uh, one guy I was kind of friends with, one of the older guys, like Cooper, this guy John Osborne, he wanted to be an underwater welder, that's what he'd done in the civilian world, and he got hurt about two weeks in, we'd occasionally see him with the, the lame and lazy division, running, walking by and is on his crutches, a uh, few other people, you know, had, uh, God, one guy, had ro- there's a rosy cheek guy who they rolled back for a weekend, because he had flagged his gun at somebody when we were doing, uh, you know, rifle uh, formation. But it was just a scare him. They put him back to like week one or two to a division with a week one or two or somewhere in there. He was kind of put the fear of God in him. But they brought him back, so they weren't completely evil. Uh, one time I, you know, the one thing about music is like you don't hear anything but cadence for two months, and you'll fucking sing it all day, every day. And the first month or so after boot camp, you're fucking singing cadence all the time. Like it is one of the most annoying earworms in the world. I was so happy, even though I don't listen to dance hall music. One time I was on watching the compartment and the host of the vision was off to class or something and Bordley was in there and she had their reggae dance hall shit on. I fucking just was so happy just to hear something that wasn't cadence. Oh my God. So graduation weekend finally comes. I've, we've passed everything. We have mom and pop night the night before. We go up in our uh, working blues. See my parents and my biological mom came down. Came up from Arkansas. Of course, they're totally proud of me. Made a point. To, they made it a uh, statement that their mom still talks about to this day. We're having cookies and uh, Kool Aid, I think, and I got some cookie crumbs on my uh, my tie. I was in there just shoving my face and trying to talk to my parents as fast as possible. And my bunkmate Dunlop comes over and like cleans up my tie while he's talking. I'm like, hey, Dunlop, this is, this is my bunkmate Dunlop. This is my parents, blah, blah, blah. And I met his parents. And my mom, my mom still thinks that's the, that's the cutest thing. It's like how we, we look out for each other. It's like, yeah, we're, you know, I'm shipmates, bottle buddies, bunkmates. Got to You know, his shoes are untied. I was, I didn't even tell him. I just get down and tie his damn shoes because he's a fucking nuke and take forever to try to figure out the most geometrically way to do it possible. So. You know, that's how you fucking roll. And we do the graduation ceremony, and, you know, we we, we practice through it just really quick, and then you don't realize how long you're standing there until you actually do the ceremony, and you're at parade rest most of the time. And people were falling out. I didn't, but, God, I felt close. My knees were just really getting shaky and rubbery. But after that, I, we graduated. Uh, I took my parents out for uh, the Red Lobster. 
since I had a couple paychecks from boot camps. I felt like a rich man. I had close to a grand, I think. It was a hell of a lot of money back in 95 for me. Uh, I bought uh, Walkman and uh, CDs, a bunch of albums for like four or five. <laughs> Some of my favorite albums now of all time and from my favorite bands came out like I was in boot camp. Uh, the Braves won the World Series in the one and only time I was in boot camp. The OJ trial uh, ended when I was in the boot camp. They came actually came around to all the classes and told us the, the verdict. And he found out who uh, who shot Mr. Burns on Simpsons. That all happened while I was in boot camp. You know, the Braves are the, the worst part because it was just told to in passing. Like, all right, night assholes. By the way, the Braves won the World Series. Ugh. Uh, we actually had a three-day week uh, graduation weekend because of a holiday. I think Veterans, middle of November, that Veterans Day. I can't remember what it was, but probably look at a calendar but uh last day my parents had already gone back so me and the aforementioned dewitt the stoner burnout from michigan we hung out uh his ex-girlfriend and her friend came and we hung out in their hotel room we went and had deep dish pizza we were sneaking around the corner smoking cigarettes you know scared to death we're gonna get caught because they're out in blues and you know they warned us don't be out there in the bars and out there trying to sneak cigarettes and what like we have people everywhere of course we believe it at that point you're so you believe anything they tell you, but uh, yeah, we're just a couple of fucking schlubs, new sailors walking around in blues. Don't give a shit. Big city, Chicago. I think it might be the first time I rode a train. I don't. Yeah, we rode the train into the city and then back. Yeah, I don't remember. I might have rode Marta or Amtrak before that. I don't. If I did, I don't. That's first time being on like a city rail. So, uh, well, the big thing happened right at this point is the uh, government shut down in 95. Uh, basically, they were going to freeze. Everything in the government was just going to freeze. And if you were stuck in boot camp, you were stuck in boot camp. And they didn't give a fuck. And if you were on service week, guess what? You did another week of service week. Uh, my later girlfriend on the ship actually uh, got stuck on service week. So, I know I got to hear what a pain in the ass that was. That's a story for another day, though. But I know we got lucky. They managed to cut our tickets to our different A schools for us, go, us going to different A schools right before the, uh, the the money freeze happened. So yeah, I got to leave them the day I was supposed to, and you know they told us you know, they basically you're completely free of boot camp once they drop you out of that van and uh, at at O'Hare. They told us like don't dilly dally and you know go directly to your A school and blah blah blah. But I read my orders. I'm not a dummy. It says I have two travel, I have two pro, two proceed days, and the stopover is in Atlanta. And I called and had my flight rerouted to the next day. And I went home to Atlanta and stayed with my aunt. For my first day of freedom in over two months. You know, just you know, bar didn't have any civilian clothes, but uh, you know, I just kind of around, lounged around in my uh, uncle's uh, PT like PT clothes, I guess, and. uh I guess I could have worn my, I guess I wore my sweat. I could have wore sweats too. But yeah, I just ate junk food and watched TV and probably masturbated about six times when they weren't home. It was fucking glorious. But uh, yeah, I think that's gonna do it. That's that is boot camp in a nutshell. Uh, next one will be I'll just have one on A school because my A school, my first one wasn't that exciting. So I'll just cover that in that one episode. I'll be up next. Hear about the wonders of my first tattoo in Meridian, Mississippi, and I need a lot to tell about it. Well, that's going to do it for the Salty Seaman and Tales from the Fleet. Boot camp is now in the books. Hope you guys have been enjoying this series. I've been enjoying doing it. Thanks a lot. Bye. Wait, I mean, peace.